Lists is rolling out. So Microsoft Lists is a new Microsoft 365 application. It is rolling out now uh, as the end of July. If we go to the Microsoft 365 roadmap and we look at the features, you can see that it shows Microsoft Lists, ready-made templates built on SharePoint, is rolling out in July of 2020. And as of today, the end of July, uh, it is rolling out. If we also look at the other things in the roadmap, there are lots of features rolling out for Microsoft Lists, including the ability to do form customization uh, coming in August, as and also lists in Microsoft Teams coming in August. So there's a lot of stuff coming for Microsoft Lists, and right now they're just rolling out the, the SharePoint list templates, but I thought this would be a great way to get you guys started with what's going on. So if you have lists, it will appear as an application in your waffle. If you click on it, click on all apps if you don't see it and you can search for it. You see it actually does not show up as one of my apps um, as it's rolling out. If you are on first release and you want to see if you can actually get to Microsoft Lists yet, you can actually go to your OneDrive and instead of going to OneDrive.aspx, go to lists.aspx and if it loads the list application you have it and you can start using it. I've got this little tip from Michael Plasaric on Twitter so thanks for that. This has allowed me to just get my hands on it and start playing with it. So here we are in lists. You can see that it lists your previous lists. This is showing uh, not only your, the list you've created with Microsoft Lists, but your SharePoint list that you've been recently accessing. So what's kind of neat about that is for your recent SharePoint lists, you can go to that list, but you can also do things like customize it so you can change the icon that's shown for that list. So this this will be pretty neat for all those lists you have out there already if you want to be able to come here and quickly get to those lists. So to get started with list, you click on new list and it says, hey, what kind of list do you want to do? A blank list from Excel, from an existing list, so some existing SharePoint list or some other list you have. And then there's these templates. And I think this is the really cool part about Microsoft Lists. You can choose from a previously defined template. So we can choose an issue tracker. And here you can see it's showing you an example of what that looks like, the fields that are there, some customizations so that give you a little more visual indicators for it. And you can go through and see all of the different list types. So let's say we want to create an issue tracker. And we can say how we want to use this template. And now it's asking us for the name of the list. We can choose a different color for the list and an icon for the list. And this is now it's going to ask you where do you want to save that list to? And you see one of the options is my lists and then you have recent sites so this is important so this is saying do you want to create a microsoft list in an existing sharepoint site or save it in your my lists so all that's going on with microsoft lists is it is creating a sharepoint list that's all microsoft lists are they are sharepoint lists for those people who say sharepoint's going away look they've got microsoft lists that's not happening at all what Microsoft has done is they've given us the ability, given the users the ability, to create cool, powerful lists for commonly requested items and made it easier to create those lists. So you don't have to be a SharePoint guru anymore to know how to create a list, how to do column formatting to make them look nice, or know anything about the field types. You can now create a list from directly within Office 365 coming soon to Teams as well, and then specify where you want to save that. If we choose to save it in My Lists, which we'll do right now, you can see that it takes us directly to that list. And if you look at the URL for the list, we're still in our OneDrive. So your OneDrive is actually stored in a SharePoint site. So if you want to actually go to your OneDrive, you can go there. And then if you go to, instead of OneDrive.aspx, if we now change this to settings.aspx, you can see this screen that from the, we've been familiar with in SharePoint for years, our site settings, right? So our OneDrive is just a SharePoint site. If you go to site lists and libraries, it's showing you all those lists and libraries that are in, that are part of that site for your OneDrive. So here's that issue tracker we just created. So again, there's nothing 
magical going on here. This isn't some brand new functionality. They're taking the existing functionality of SharePoint and making it easier for us to use. So let me go ahead and create one more list for you guys. We'll put it into a SharePoint site. So let's create a new list. Let's do the employee onboarding and let's put that into a SharePoint site. So I'm going to choose my demo SharePoint site and create it there. So now it's taking us to our SharePoint site with our list. And you can see again, this is by the URL. This is just my SharePoint site. If we go into my site contents, you'll see that there's a SharePoint site. The interesting thing is though that you can see that the list is taking up the entire page. And if you go to the gear, it's only showing you very few options. Just now it's just list settings and view all for Office 365. If we click on the new button, it's bringing us to a standard SharePoint form for creating an entry. So I can go ahead and create a, uh, an, an item here. Let's go ahead and put some fields in so you can see that. And let's go ahead uh, just pick some stuff. I'm going to put my name there. Save this and you can see the item gets created and you see that it has uh, this column formatting on it. So you may think this is really cool. I like this column formatting. If you actually go and select the column and go to column settings and format this column, it takes you to the column formatting JSON that was able to style that. Again, this is a SharePoint list with column formatters applied to it. So if you really like this, you could actually copy and paste this column formatter to your other SharePoint lists and take advantage of that as well. You can now create workflows using Power Automate behind it to do things for these lists. You can customize the forms today with uh, Power Apps. Like I said, the, the ability to customize these list forms are coming later too, so it's going to be really cool to see what they're doing there. I saw some of the screenshots from when they demoed this and had the forms in Teams, which is kind of cool. Um, so there's lots of things coming for it. The last thing I wanted to show you is that you know we're in the SharePoint site. It's taking up the whole page, so it looks a little different. And the key to that is in your URL. In the query string here, you see it says question mark env equals web view list. So if I remove this query string and load the page, it loads it like a normal list in SharePoint now, right? We've got our left nav back, we've got the top back, we've got our top navigation back. So you can see it's it's it is just a SharePoint list in a SharePoint site. So that's, that's pretty much all there is to it. That's all I want to show you guys is that, you know, what exactly is a Microsoft list? It is just a SharePoint list. It's a SharePoint list that's either in the same site as your OneDrive, if it's a My List, or it's in one of your SharePoint sites. If you have it in your My List, you can create it there. You can share it with people there. It's a way for users to more easily create lists for the things they want to do and get their job done. I'm very much looking forward to see what else they do with it. Uh, once you see it, get in there and start playing with it. It's going to be a great tool.